Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our fourth episode, Loops uh, webinar. Uh, for some of them, some some of you that haven't followed us before, Loops webinar is just a series of webinars uh, dedicated to showcasing a circular economy and sustainability innovations. Uh, we aim to bring together European funded projects under the same research topic. Uh, and the objective is very simple. Uh, we pair them together so they can exhibit, first of all, uh, their progress, their results, but also to exchange best practices and best One project with us, but is having technical issues. So hopefully we will solve it in the meantime. But here with with us we have um, first of all Damien Saleh from the project Maelstrom. Daniel Damien is a technical expert from Technalia and project manager. He, uh, Technalia is one of the most important research centers in Spain. And with us we have also Teresa Agnia. Uh, is the project coordinator and research associate uh, of the project Increase. Uh, she is a research associate of Fraunhofer ICM in Berlin on sustainability and circularity in waste, uh, uh, EEE, so electronic waste, uh, and project coordinator, as I said, of Increase. With us, we should have uh, Carolina Mejia Niño. Hopefully, she will be able to join. She's having uh, some uh, technical issues. Uh, she's a senior innovator, uh, innovation project manager and leader of dissemination and communication tasks in, uh, with the, within the project Primus or Primus. Uh, but uh, before starting, let's, uh, let's uh, contextualize uh, the episode of today. Um, today, we, are, we will be talking about the persistent... plastic pollution, uh, environmental concerns. Um, it, it affects uh, and has a, a huge effect on all ecosystems. And also, and more specifically today, we'll be uh, speaking about the marine biodiversity with uh, the project Maelstrom. Um, the European Commission, as we know, is putting a lot of uh, interest in solving the situation through the plastic strategy. Um, we know that one of the main um, um, addresses in the Circular Economy Action Plan for is, is the forthcoming prohibition of single-use plastic packaging. And hopefully uh, today we will see some innovative solutions um, in, the, in the works. And uh, we will try to uh, uh, bring more attention uh, pr towards the solution and towards the directive that uh, the European Commission is is um, pushing forward. So, without uh, further ado, I will give the floor to Damien Salé, uh, Project Maelstrom, for his introduction and uh, description of the project. Welcome, Damien, again. Yes, thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to um, to uh, discuss here the uh, the Maelstrom project. Um, what we will uh, present is one of the technologies that we develop in this project. Uh, we call that the seabed cleaner. Uh, it's a robotic platform to operate underwater. And we use that to collect uh, marine litter from the seabed of the oceans. Uh, there's another big technology that is a, a bubble barrier that goes in the rivers to collect the plastics from the floating uh, um, surface. And also we have um, uh, recycling and sorting technologies. Um, so looking at this uh, platform, um, as you mentioned, uh, we mainly develop it in Technalia. We're one of the biggest uh, research center, applied research center in Spain. Uh, we do robotics in all of um, different aspects. And you can check here uh, different videos of, uh, on YouTube if you're interested in, in what we do. I really. Uh, yeah, propose you uh, to check that. Um, so we're talking about plastics, uh, talking about uh, plastics in the ocean, we're talking about man litter. As you know, it's a very big issue. Uh, there's lots of plastics in the oceans, uh, but uh, the latest um, research shows that there's only 1% on the surface water. So the rest is 
either distributed, either already uh, dissolved, or it's lying on the on the seabed. Um, so that's why we developed Maelstrom, uh, a project to actually collect uh, this uh, litter and treat it. Uh, we recently won the uh, Atlantic Project Award uh, from the uh, European Commission um, to highlight the, uh, the the benefits that we proved in this in this project. So if you want to collect these plastics, as I mentioned, there are already lots of uh, innovations and solutions. Okay, lots, some for the surface. This is the ocean uh, cleanup uh, project. This is the Manta catamaran, that's a water shark, and bubbles around the rivers. But when you look at the seabed, uh, there's very little things. So you go with divers most of the time. There are some that work with ropes, small underwater robots, but they are not so efficient. They also have lots of issues with current. They can't pick up very heavy loads. Uh, so let's say that there's no very um, no uh, solution that is very uh, satisfactory. So that's why we work, and that's our contribution. Our contribution is this uh, device. As you can see, it's a floating platform. It's an industrial uh, blocks on which we have four different uh, towers that connect uh, to a cable robot. And uh, this solution, it allows to reach the seabed of the shallow waters um, and perform operations. One of the operations for this project is collecting the marine litter. And we try to do that, minimizing the impact on the ecosystem. Um, so as I mentioned, we have a floating platform. We have four towers. Uh, you can see here pulleys and cables that connect to this, uh, let's say, yellow tool. That's the robot itself. And uh, on this tool, we put um, active components. Uh, in this case, we have a suction device and we have a uh, gripper. And what we can do with all these cables, it's like uh, the, uh, the camera on the stadium. Uh, we can control the robot in the six degrees of freedom in position and in orientation using either a teleoperated mode or an automated mode. Um, we obviously add sensors underwater, so lots of cameras, uh, lots of um, uh, depth sensors, acceleration units, uh, some sonars for the depths, and so on and so on. And as I said, we have two devices on this prototype. One is a suction device uh, for, for smaller objects, that's the blue tube that you see there. And we have a gripper, the black one, uh, which is uh, able to collect up to 130 kilos, uh, larger uh, components. Um, so that's a small video that highlights uh, what we have been achieving in the project. It's a four-year project, and uh, we are, let's say, three years and a bit more. Um, the hotspot that we work with this uh, project is in uh, Venice. It's in the lagoon and in the sea, in the, in the coastal area. Um, the platform itself, it can be positioned using uh, two RTK GPS, so centimetric level. We position and orient the, the device. It's moved by the boat uh, at the moment. And you can see here the mobility of the tool uh, by uh, controlling and adjusting the length and the tension in the cables. We can move the robot head in the six degrees of freedom with the rotation um, on the underwater. We go up to 20 meters depth with this prototype. And uh, we've applied it, as I said, in two sites. One is inside the lagoon, uh, in an area where they make the collection of all the waste from the city. And it's historically also, uh, there's been lots of dumpings. Uh, so here you can see what we see in the lagoon, most, not very much. So we improved uh, the perception using uh, advanced algorithms to collect things. And among these things, there's lots of tires over there, lots of big uh, wooden elements, uh, machine uh, components, lots of construction waste, and also lots of general garbage, let's say. So as you can see, it's a, it's a very uh, efficient device. Uh, we collected uh, overall inside and outside the lagoons uh, about two tons of mine litter in, in uh, two weeks, let's say. Um, so that's the second test site, which is outside in the sea. It's about uh, three kilometers away from the coast. And here it's an uh, abandoned uh, uh, mussel farm where they left everything uh, on the seabed. So obviously we are in the sea. Uh, so there's, there's current, there's the surface also uh, motion that uh, makes the things a bit more difficult for the pilot. But controlling the, the, uh, and adjusting that, we're able to remove lots of buoys 
and lots of uh, hundreds of meters of, of uh, ropes. All of this is plastic and all of, all of this has been there for a uh, lot of years. It's never been cleaned. And so that's, that's what we, uh, we, div- we did in the Maelstrom project. Uh, validating this technology in the, in the real life. So that's, that's um, really hundreds of meters of, of, um, of ropes that were in the sand. So it's really heavy to lift by hand. It's really, really heavy. So we use the robot to go and pick up the, the rope and then uh, making uh, back and forth motions to actually uh, lift it from the uh, sediments and bring it up to the surface for, uh, for recycling. So it's been quite fun. Uh, obviously, you see a, a good day with lots of nice weather and uh, zero wave. It's not been always like that. Um, and uh, that's that's the conditions where you have to work with the... Uh, with the real world. Um, so what we are now is that the prototype, it's, it's at TRL 7.8, let's say it's working very well. And we're looking at applications where we can deploy it. Another aspect that we do also is collecting the waste, the marine litter that we had and sorting it with a robotic system. Here you can see the uh, perception and AI where we uh, classify the different items by the plastics uh, categories and we remove the thermoplastics that we can then recycle in different uh, technologies developed in the project. So just as a, as a summary, these are some pictures of things that we collected in the, in the lagoon. As you see, lots of variety of things. It's more large objects than small objects because there's very bad visibility there. And also we were expecting to have bottles and, and uh, single-use plastics lying on the seabed, but that's not the case. They're, they're inside the sediments. Uh, so it's been uh, quite tricky to, uh, to actually collect them. And here you can see the boys that we collected in the open sea. Um, so now what we have is that we've demonstrated that it's possible and efficient to remove this marine litter uh, from the seabed up to 20 meters with this prototype. Uh, we are in good negotiation with the Venice entity to actually uh, next year, uh, at the end of the project, perform a real commercial cleaning of one of the areas. Um, what we see is that to actually um, use that for cleaning, it's an expensive device. Obviously, it's a prototype. We need to go through industrialization phase. And for that, uh, not sure that the uh, circular economy and plastic removal would be uh, a good enough business to make to find someone to invest. So what we are looking at is other applications uh, performed by uh, by divers usually that could be operated by such a system. Obviously, we would remove the gripper and the suction device, and we would put other things like a dredge, like uh, cutting device, water jet, any operation that is required to do. Uh, we can do that with the robot. It's a, it's a very flexible device. Um, and that's, that's where we are at, uh, looking ways to find uh, and to secure funding for the industrialization phase so that we can create products out of this uh, device that can be used for commercial applications, but also for cleaning. But the, the gap between prototype to, uh, pr- to product, uh, we believe that we need more commercial applications for someone to invest in that. Um, hope you are interested in that. Maybe you are a good partner to do that with us. So if you're interested in, in the cleaning, in the technology, or in the other operations, um, yeah, please uh, contact with me and, and we'll see what we can do. And um, contact here by email uh, if you want, uh, both myself and Mariola. Uh, she's our project manager here in Technalia, also in this cable robotics technology. And um, that's it for me now. I hope uh, I was on time. Um, and uh, really eager to see the other uh, partners uh, commenting the projects. Thank you so much, Damien. A very, very interesting presentation indeed. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, because initially I thought we were speaking about plastics, but I understand that now seeing your presentation, this is this project uh, covers a wide variety of possible value chains because while you are recuperating waste in the bottom of the sea, um, we are not seeing, of course, only you mentioned that you have recovered also construction materials and, and you have recovered tires and you have recovered um, tons of different materials that could be 
probably and hopefully reinserted in a, in a new circular, circular value chain. This is my hope uh, as, as a, the future for the development of, of Maelstrom, for sure. I do have a question for you immediately, and maybe then we will leave other questions uh, after the presentation of our second uh, project. But um, I noticed that you are mentioning that you are collecting data. And today, uh, data has become one of the most uh, uh, wanted and needed uh, aspects of, of the research, because uh, without that, we cannot move forward. We cannot prove uh, our innovations. Uh, results. Um, do, are you developing uh, a platform that collects the, that data uh, that uh, can be also reused maybe uh, in, in the future in other projects, for example? So the project Maelstrom, yes, we have uh, this uh, open data objects uh, strategy. Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, developed and put in work by uh, the coordinator, the uh, CNR EMAR. In, in Italy, um, and so um, it's quite a heavy work to actually put all the data in these uh, research objects and so on. So it's it's work in progress, I would say. Uh, all the uh, pre and post analysis of the environmental impact of these technologies is already provided by the uh, by the Italian partners. Um, we have collected uh, data in terms of uh, underwater images and things like that that we plan to put into. Uh, into uh, shared uh, workspaces. It's very heavy and it's not so easy to, uh, to actually uh, define what is usable by others, okay? Oh. And also there are other partners, uh, CNRS Liam in France, they are working on AI for the classification, detection of the, uh, the plastics in the water and so on. And they also uh, provide open data sets uh, on the uh, information collected. So you can go on the Maelstrom website. It's maelstrom-h2020.eu, I think. Um, and then on the uh, portal, you have access to uh, a section where we talk about this data access. Uh, as I said, work in progress. Uh, it's it's a heavy work to do, but uh, that we, we're committed to provide information for people who are interested. Perfect. I will uh, then request our colleague Martin to post the link of the Maelstrom project so that uh, all our participants can access uh, to the project and uh, keep investigating and uh, have an access to the results of this great project. Thank you so much, Damien, for now, and we will be back to you. But now I will want to give the floor uh, to our second presenter today. Uh, I think... Um, Teresa Eichner is uh, here with us. Teresa, as uh, I previously presented you, you are the project coordinator of the project Increase. And um, Increase is actually tackling the challenge of uh, um, the value chains. As we saw in the previous presentation, um, circular economy is all about creating new circular value chains. And, um, and I'm pretty sure you are using technology also in your project. So I'll leave the floor for your presentation. Thank you, Teresa. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Please let me know once you can see the slides. I guess you're able to see them now. Okay, good. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, and uh, in general, good morning to everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. It's really a pleasure and an honor to be speaking here today. And thanks a lot for the opportunity of also arranging different project uh, projects with similar focuses. So it was also super interesting for me now to listen to you, Damien. And I'm also looking forward to Carolina's presentation. So my name is Teresa Egner. I'm working as a research associate at Fraunhofer ISM. We're based in Berlin and our institute focuses on electronics. And I, in particular, um, I'm situated in the department which is investigating the environmental aspects of electronics. So we, for example, focus on topics such as recycling, which I will be speaking about uh, today. And already the abbreviation of increase uh, kind of speaks for itself. 
So increases focusing on increasing the recycled content in added value products. In our case, we're mainly focusing on electronics and, ele and, uh, and electrical devices, but also a little bit beyond and uh, on the material focused plastics. And we're doing so in order yeah, to finally achieve a resilient and digitized circular economy. So just a little bit on the background, Incre Increase consists of 70 different partners from across the European Union. And actually already within the consortium, we are reflecting the entire value chain as, been, as has been said already. So we not only have uh, experts involved who are focusing on waste collection, but also on the different recycling technologies. Uh, we have experts on sorting, but we also have product designers in the consortium. We are centered around five business cases. So we also have the brand owners and the business cases within the consortium. And uh, we have we are also tackling the economic, environmental and societal aspects. And of course, uh, last not least, we have the system aspects, the system perspective, which also includes regulation and legal aspects and traceability along the entire value chain. So just to give you a little bit of a background, where does increase come from? We have started off in 2014 already with, with the first uh, Horizon 2020 project, uh, focusing uh, somehow on the topic. And one of the main challenges of the project was also to produce a high impact and high gloss piano black ABS. And uh, in the follow up project, uh, which was the police project, um, we investigated on a similar topics. So also the increase on the uptake, uh, so increasing the uptake of recycled plastics in new electric and electronic devices. And Teresa, there we already, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you just very briefly. You are not presented in full screen. That's what I'm being told. Can you okay. please check that your presentation is uh, in a presentation mode? Let's give it a try. It should be, but I can try a different. Um... Does it work now? I think it's not. It's the same. Okay, let me check. I will try yeah, sharing try again. Exactly. So. Does it work now? I think so. I think now it's better if someone else can confirm, please, from, from the team. Yes, it's working. Thank you so Wonderful. much, Teresa. Please go ahead. <laughs> so I'll just uh, run through the previous slides. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so within the uh, sorry, within the police project, we actually managed to substantially uh, increase the recycle content for different products. So we had uh, more than nine product demonstrators at the end, and five of them them even reached the market. However, there were still some challenges remaining unresolved. So this is why we then uh, followed up with the increase project also in order to finally fill the gap of achieving the 10 million tons of recycled plastics that the EU plastic strategy has set uh, by 2025. So that's already next year. And uh, within the increase project, which started 2022, uh, we have this in multidisciplinary uh, consortium to investigate on five different uh, business cases. And here in the corner, you can already see a glimpse of what the products center around. And uh, they are mainly focusing on electronics and electrical applications. Uh, but I will go into further detail later on. And so all of the three projects actually uh, follow the same philosophy, namely bringing together all the relevant actors from the entire value chain at the same table to yeah, find some holistic solutions. So we've already heard now from a marine litter challenges related to plastics, but why electronics? Uh, let me just briefly set the scene. So uh, today we are experiencing an increasing digitalization of social and economic life. So uh, electronics products and devices, as all of you will know, uh, have become an integral part of our lives and also of industry. But uh, the continuing make 
take, make, dispose lifestyles are still dominating our societies. And this is why consequentially today uh, e-waste is the fastest growing waste stream on the global scale. So since plastics makes up quite a significant share of it, as you can see on the left hand side, depending on the, the product uh, categories, uh, approximately around 19 percent, this means that we really also need to tackle this sector when it comes to plastics. And uh, I would like to just quickly emphasize on the right hand side, you can see that the composition of the plastics that are contained in electrical and electronic devices are very uh, vast. So there's quite a complex uh, composition and it consists of many different polymers, different additives, many different uh, things that actually then already emphasizing uh, that are emphasizing the challenge that recyclers are uh, facing in their daily life when trying to, yeah, recycle plastics to become uh, an input somewhere again. So this leads to the fact that only 2% of today's recyclates are used in electrical and electronic devices. And how are we now filling this gap? So as I said, we have five different business cases where we try to tackle different uh, actually challenges. Um, and we do this by uh, having this innovative and interdisciplinary consortium and trying to find solutions in a holistic way and uh, looking there for, from the different perspectives such as societal, economic, regulatory, technical, but also material perspective to eventually, as I said, uh, finally bridge the gap uh, to achieve the 10 million tons goal that the plastic strategy has set. So now uh, diving into the business cases that uh, are kind of at the core of the project, let's say. So as I said, we're tackling the different challenges uh, where currently almost no plastic recyclates are being applied. First of all, we focus on medical devices. So here we have the example of an electric toothbrush from Philips and uh, we are since uh, yeah, toothbrushes uh, have like skin contact, there are quite some legal restrictions and very specific properties that the plastic uh, needs to, to needs to meet. So this is the first challenge that we're tackling. The second one is fo focusing on food contact components. Here we have a steaming device from Vorwerk within the consortium. So we are trying to find a, re a suitable recycler, which actually makes sure that uh, it's still safe to be used, and also meets regulatory uh, restrictions and requirements. And uh, nonetheless, even if it's already uh, quite tricky to meet food contact requirements, uh, the steaming device obviously also needs to meet uh, quite some uh, other property um, requirements in terms of uh, heat re resistance, steaming resistance, and so on. The third uh, business case that we are looking at in the consortium is a home composting device, which is exposed to biodegrading material and also liquids. So here we are focusing on the chemical resistance and uh, ensuring that no migration of uh, additives and substances within the plastics is happening. And uh, the fourth um, uh, business case focuses on uh, electrostatic discharge. So within the consortium, we have Kapka, who is producing uh, EST pellets, so electrostatic discharge pellets, which are used uh, mainly for transporting components from the automotive industry. And uh, there we have to ensure that uh, yeah, the recyclates are still fulfilling the requirements. And uh, we are currently investigating in how far we can actually substitute the virgin uh, plastics with recyclates. And the fifth uh, and last business case is uh, focusing on flammability. So we are uh, uh, investigating, for example, on EV chargers, which of course must uh, feature quite some flame retarding properties. So moving on, uh, I would like to just quickly sketch to you what is the like the 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 structure of the increased project. So looking at it at a glance from the different work package perspective, first of all, we have a work package one, which is mainly focusing on identifying the most suitable uh, sources for the business cases in terms of uh, which fractions can be used and which uh, yeah, which uh, pre-processing steps need, need to happen, which sorting steps need to happen in order to have the best quality outcome. Also accompanied by traceability aspects. 
And uh, in work package two, we look at the three different te recycling technologies that we, we investigate in the project. So we have mechanical recyclers, chemical recyclers, but also solvent-based recyclers, which all have their pros and cons. And we're trying to find the best, best match for the business cases. Then in the third work package, uh, I would like to emphasize that actually the environmental footprint of uh, products is defined by 80% already at the design stage. So we really need to also intervene early on in product design. And uh, this is why we also have circular product design as one of our work packages, uh, where we are also evaluating the environmental performance of the different recycling pathways, for example and developing guidelines and tools for designers in order to investigate their products in an early stage. Then, as I already have mentioned, we have the business case kind of at the core of the pro project where we are trying to meet the requirements that the brands have set and uh, this is also accompanied by the societal perspective. So we are looking at how we can improve consumer acceptance of recyclates. So then kind of stimulating the demand, but also designing effective collection solutions. And those, this we're also doing together with end users so that we make sure that the solutions are actually also taken up and uh, well received. Well, this will then kind of also feed back into the supply of recyclates because when it's it's well collected, we can then supply suitable materials. Work package six then focuses on exploring uh, the regulatory and legal landscape. So we are also investigating on uh, providing input to policymakers. For example, we have a white paper under development and we are also looking at the economic perspective. So the environmental uh, assessment, uh, the, so the life cycle assessment is also accompanied by a life costing, life cycle costing assessment. So we are really looking into how environmentally friendly are the solutions that we develop, but also are they economically feasible now or also in terms of uh, feasibility in the future. Then we have work package seven, looking at the entire system. So we are really investigating and uh, taking this perspective of a secondary raw material instead of the waste perspective and trying to find uh, good sources for recyclates within the available streams. And um, yeah, so this is something that's being done by our partner Vito. And uh, last but not least, we have work package eight, which is focusing on disseminating and exploiting the results that we are developing within the project in the best suitable way. And then, of course, uh, all being uh, accompanied by management and coordination, following the, the main goal of increasing the share of recycled plastics in added value products. And just to give you one concrete example, I've already uh, teasered that uh, we are also developing some guidelines for designers. So this is a, a screenshot of the previous uh, project where we have already developed some, some designer guidelines for circular product design. And we are expanding these with more recycling technologies. And also we are investigating in a practical tool. And uh, we'll, you will be hearing more about that. And we have also had already some workshops uh, centering around uh, the topic where we also invited some externals in order to get feedback really from people who are working hands-on in product development and product design. So feel free to reach out. Here's uh, my contact and also my colleague Ronja Schultz. We're together, we're coordinating the proje project and uh, are happy to answer any questions. And uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion later on. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, indeed, very, very interesting uh, also your approach. Um, I do have a quick question for you as well uh, before we move on to the discussion and hopefully to welcome our third speaker if the technical um, problems are solved, hopefully. Um, you mentioned um, during your presentation um, a, a, a deep analysis of the regulatory framework. I am um, well um, involved in, 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 in this kind of studies. And I wanted to ask you, is there a specific uh, uh, regulation or um, that is creating 
uh, barriers towards the development and implementation of the increased project that you can mention? So I have to say that, uh, as I mentioned, within the project, we are tackling various different sectors. So not only medical, but also food contact. So we are, we don't have like this one sector uh, that we focus on. So this also means that we are investigating in way more uh, legal requirements uh, than if we would just focus on one sector. So there is not this one uh, legislation that I would like to highlight now, but we are currently uh, really looking at what of what kind of legal restrictions are there out there also in terms of definitions in terms of standards and then hopefully we'll get a, a full picture of what are the main barriers rather towards the end of the pro uh, project but uh, yeah since we're tackling many different sectors i am afraid i cannot provide this one uh, answer Okay, okay, it, it, it sounds good. So we will wait for the, the, the end of the project and, and hopefully we will get a, a, a whole idea of, of the, the work related to, to regulatory uh, framework. I did notice that um, there is a central focus uh, around um, <clears throat> uh, circular design. And we know that um, ESPR um, regulation is now uh, very central to um, to the European Commission's work. Um, is there anything um, <clears throat> that you would like to highlight? I, I understand that you are creating a guideline, which I think is very useful. And hopefully um, now our, with the help of, of the team, we can have also uh, the details for the link uh, for, from increase so we can um, follow the work that you are uh, developing with your team. But um, it, how is ESPR um, uh, assisting um, on, on, on these very stages of, of the project? Yeah, I think uh, for the ESPR, I mean, uh, it, the ESPR covers uh, various different uh, product categories, right? Not just electrical and electronic devices, but for now, I think it's more elaborate on textiles and other sectors, which are not so much linked to our project. And since it's, I think it's supposed to be signed this month, even or next month, and only then uh, the different product categories uh, will be assessed and uh, there will be some legislation developed for the different product categories. So I think it's still something that is very far on the horizon even if it's coming and we're definitely looking at it but it's nothing that we directly count on now but we are rather investigating what is actually since it's a research and innovation project what is actually technical economically and environmentally feasible now and in terms of sustainability of course and uh, hopefully this will also somehow influence the development and we hope to also be kind of uh, in touch with policymakers and trying to, of course, feed on in our results as well, um, if that answers your question. It, it did, it did, uh, actually. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, so um, I think we, um, I just asked uh, my team if we have um, Carolina with us, if the issue has been solved uh, and we can present her or no. Okay. Hello, can yes. you hear me? Yes, Carolina, we're yeah. very happy to, to hear you. Uh, we're glad that you're here with us and uh, that the problem has been solved. Really quickly, let me introduce you. Uh, Carolina Mejia is, um, is uh, the, lead, uh, the leader of the dissemination and, uh, and communication task within the project Primus, a project that is tackling uh, um, the value chains as well. It's, uh, similar to the project that we just presented, Increase. Um, it aims to facilitate the circulation uh, of the underutilized or non-recycled streams. So Carolina, with a great pleasure, I give you the floor for the presentation of the project premise. Thank you, Aime, and thank you for inviting me. It's quite a pleasure to be here. And yeah, as you uh, were saying, I'm Carolina Mejia from Mondragon Corporation. I'm a senior innovation project manager. And in the Primus project, I lead the communication, dissemination, and exploitation tasks. So I will try to explain the Primus project as, as far as I can. I'm not a technical uh, person, so uh, I will try to answer all the questions as, as I can. And um, 
the increased project that Teresa was presenting as well as the Primus project, we are both sister project. That means that we present our projects to the same topic for the uh, Horizon Europe. So um, we are tackling kind of the, the same thing. In our case is reforming secondary plastic to become the primary raw material choice for added value product. So um, I will have a, um, a quiet glance of the Primus project there and then we will look to the different research areas, mainly focus on the results that we have right now. And then we will take a look on the Primus timeline. So as I was saying before, the objective of the Primus project is to utilize non-recycled uh, plastics and create uh, new added value products for two sectors, automation and, and home appliances. So uh, what we are trying to do is added value products from plastic waste, utilizing uh, mechanical recycling and novel pre-treatments and analytics. So uh, here you can see the Primus concept. We have five main blocks. The first one is uh, creating suitable for demo products for uh, from untapped plastics. So we have uh, two demo if, um, products for automotive interiors and the uh, cooling circuits and two for home appliances that we are approaching the washing machines uh, door seals and the refrigerator inner liners. In the second block, we are also uh, seeking for the this recycled plastic formulation with a traceability from the origin of the material to uh, the end and how we can uh, utilize it uh, within a circular economy business model. So we are tracking all this information with a digital product passport uh, and management. Then in the third block, we have the production of this high quality and safe recyclate uh, formulations for this four demo products because uh, the important part of uh, this task as well as, as increase is that uh, we need to create high added value products for automotive and home appliances that they have safety and quality and technical requirements. So we need to approach this uh, formulation of creating a new material with high quality and safe risk plates with a verification method for safety and quality as well. And the fourth uh, block is um, analyzing the plastic waste degradation. So we take uh, the plastic waste and analyze the, degra the, the degradation level they have, as well as the a bromine they have inside. This is quite important because before the, the project started, a, a new regulation where all plastics uh, couldn't have bromine inside their formulations uh, is quite important for the re uh, utilization of recycled materials because all the recycled material, not all of them, but most of the recycled material that we will need to use, uh, we should take out the bromine. So we have inside the project, the bromination methods as well. And, uh, well, we are tackling all this uh, value chain with the continuous community engagement and taking into account the whole value chain of the plastic recycling. So um, all these objectives are tackled by 12 uh, European partners that we're located in six different countries. And this uh, project is started on May 2022 and has a duration of three years. So right now we are still, um, well, we are starting our third year. There you can see the different partners that we have. And this is the project stru a structure. So it is quite similar to increase because in the first word package, word package one, uh, we are analyzing all the regulations and all the standards related to uh, recycled products, as well as a common definition of recyclates that, uh, that we uh, need to analyze as well. In the second word package, we have the characterization and analysis of this 
recycled plastic. So we have the, the bromination methods as well as the um, by a degradation level of the plastic recyclates. On the third word package, we have the production of quality recyclates. So we have uh, the formulation of the, um, the recyclates that we need for the demo cases. So in, in the third word package, we have different um, research centers that are working for the best formulation as well as compounders for the pre-industrialization part. In work package four, we have um, this demo cases. The, it will be the recycled plastic in novel added value products. So this is the, a work package that is uh, not starting, but we are doing some trials on how these formulations that we have already created are functioning um, in a safety and technical manner, as well as in a pre-industrial uh, way. The fifth word package is related to traceability, reliability, and safety. So uh, there we have the creation of, uh, well, we already had the digital product password, but the creation of how to track the recycled materials, because this is quite different. Uh, we need to track them from the beginning of, of, the, of the waste and then understand the different steps the, and the information that we need inside the digital product passport to trace this material, as well as relate um, LCAs, LCCs, and, um, and social LCA to the digital product passport and the traceability system. We also have a word package six that it's related to sustainability assessments that are all the a analysis of life cycles assessment or cost assessment or social assessment of each of the formulations and products. Um, then we have War Package 7, that is uh, what Mondragon leads, the communication, dissemination, exploitation, and stakeholder engagement that we are creating to different uh, communities. And War Package 8, that it's the management and coordination of the project lead by VTT. So uh, checking the main research areas that uh, we have different results that I would like to focus my presentation of on the results of the, of the project. The first one is eliminating hazardous substance from recycl recycled materials, then uh, how we have formulated all this uh, new materials for the four demo cases. And the third one is the, the guarantee and good quality of the supply chain. So in the first part, we have several results. Uh, first of all, we have a, developed a sampling and standard analysis on how to analyze the, the recycled material once you have it, the recyclers have it, for instance. So we have used uh, ultra high resolution mass spectrometry for the characterization of the plastics, understanding the different type of plastic that could um, a recycler uh, have in their, in their facilities. Then a degradation management, understanding how the plastic degradate and the different uh, type of, uh, of polymers that we are using inside the project uh, with uh, an active high spectral sensor that identifies the degradation of each of the plastics. The characterization of the plastic process with um, analyzing the volatile uh, content in, in each of the plastics. Then the debromination method, as well as I was saying that we need to take out the, the bromine of each of the uh, recycled plastic that we use. And we have um, analyzed this with three different methods, supercritical CO2, diperiodic solvent, and catalyst, catalyst approach. Uh, we have also created um, a standard that it's the pre-1000 method uh, that, well, it has the objective to validate and standardize um, the the how how the recyclers take and analyze the the recycled materials and this standard is 
compliance to the project uh, product legislation that it's uh, actual right now, reach, rot, pop substances. Uh, and the idea is to have this standard for recycled in a cost effective and reliable manner. So uh, I leave you over there, the link to a webinar where the pre 1000 method is explained. Then we have established an EU wide accepted definition for us recycled with a broad engagement of different European plastic sectors and recyclers. I also leave the link to the public deliverable that we have created with this EU-wide definition. And we are creating a white paper that will guide recyclers on the sourcing and characterization of the materials, also based on the pre-1000 method. Moving forward on the formulation of the different um, materials for the demo cases. First, uh, well, we have prepared the recycled polymers for production responding to technical and safety requirements. And after that, we have created the different uh, compounds for each of the, um, on the, of the industrial application. So the first pilot is the automotive interior that it's the aesthetics compound because it's the, the, the uh, frontal part of the, of the car. We have a formulation of recycled PC and ABS, and this compounds uh, respond to surface aesthetics necessities and injection process. So right now we have a formulation with an 80 to 90% of recycling content. Um, and we are analyzing the possibility of utilizing the recycled PC of the um, uh, waste of electric and electronical devices. The second pilot uh, that we have is the automotive cooling circuit that responds to a technical requirements and specifications where we accomplish a mixture of recycled PP and EPDM and TPV for an ejection process. So right now, uh, the formulation has approximately 20 to 25% of recycled content. And we want to move forward and increase this percentage of recycling content. But the formulation that right now is functioning uh, in the trials for safety and technical requirements is the one that has 20 to 25%. On the third pilot that we are approaching the refrigerator inner liners for food contact. And this is quite important because the, um, the material has uh, different necessities uh, for food contact. We are utilizing recycled uh, hips and testing chemical solutions to reduce the nions in the pellets. So uh, we are testing this formulation for a thermoformed process and um, starting a consumer study with uh, 50 to 60% of recycled content in this formulation. And in the fourth pilot, this we are approaching the machine door seals, uh, the washing machine door seals, sorry for that. And um, we are utilizing the recycled EPDM. So, we are answering technical requirements and specifications uh, accomplished with a mixture of recycled EPDM of the end of life washing machines and reclaim EPDM as well. And uh, we just answer the chemical compatibility with detergents. And uh, in this mixture, we have a 20% of recycled content, even though we, we want to increase this percent as well. And in the third group of results that I wanted to present is the guarantee of a good quality and secure supply chain. So we are investigating on how to guarantee the supply and generate demand. So we are in contact with different suppliers and um, recyclers, as well as OEMs and what type of, of material they need and how do they need it. and how we could match and help a little bit in this value chain. And we are assessing as well an LCA and LCS, so a life cost and social one for recycled facilities, as well as comparing the four 
uh, demo cases and the four materials that we are using. Um, compare the recycled one with the virgin materials and connect the information of the LCAs with system dynamic models that this is the first of its kind, that it includes legislation and technology development and social acceptance um, in the whole process. So tomorrow we will be having uh, um, a webinar about this topic. So i leave you over there the link to the invitation of this webinar. And um, we also are investigating on the traceability and digital product passport of Recyclates. So I was, as I was saying before, um, one of our partners already had the development of a digital product passport, and we are introducing the traceability of the recycled materials in their systems. Um, they have a blockchain and a serial knowledge proof um, software with a smart questioning where the, 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 the information necessary to each partner is under custody and with the specific questions and, and it's uh, private. So, so not all the information is revealed, but we are introducing the LCA and a social LCCs and a, and the system dynamics models to the digital product passport to understand the, um, the Recyclate's uh, path. And this is the Primus timeline. So I as I was saying, the Primus project started in May, 2022. And we are right now in the second year or finishing the second year or starting the, the third year of our project. So we have already accomplished the analysis of the feedstock samples. Uh, we have already finished the LCAs and social uh, LCAs methodologies. Uh, we have already accomplished, and I can't see the, the slide uh, underneath, but we have accomplished the formulations of the four demo cases. And uh, right now, well, we are approaching on upscale the four demo cases formulation to a pre-industrial scale and establish a robust and reliable uh, sampling protocol for the feedstock and recycled material to be applied as well in the four demo cases. Uh, we are also approaching the recycled food safety and compliance for and uh, certification of SDRNX. And uh, we will need to finish the development of the traceability system for Recyclates linked to LCAs and LCCs and system dynamics models. Mm, and thank you for uh, having me here and thank you for the time. If you have any question, please let me know. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Carolina, for your uh, for your presentation. We are very glad that you managed to be with us because mm. uh, we couldn't miss your presentation for sure. Um, going. No. Now asking um, our our audience to please not be shy and, and uh, keep keep coming uh with uh these interesting uh, questions but first of all i will give um the first question will be for teresa uh, uh i have a question from mohammed fatu um he he is touching a very uh, uh interesting aspect of the, our projects and is the reach of the projects uh, uh regarding of course, job creations and possibilities. Um, he's asking how best the project will support youth in low-income countries to develop and establish e-waste collection sites. Uh, he's specifically asking uh, for Sierra Leone, but I think in general, if we can, if we can um, foresee involvement and, 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 and results from the project. Um, in, in this matter, in this aspect of the job creation. And, and um, 
and, uh, and uh, waste collection sites. I'm sorry, because I have two questions from him. One is regarding job creations, and the other one is regarding uh, the development of waste collection sites. So, Teresa, please. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot uh, for this interesting question. And I myself have to say I'm also super curious uh, to to look into how in how far our results can actually also be scaled and applied in different countries. I have to say, though, that, of course, it's a European funded project, which is primarily focusing on the European countries. So therefore, uh, yeah, I, I have to just uh, I have to say that uh, our main focus is centered around European countries and we're trying to to look in into that that areas as well because uh, already within European Union it's a very different difficult when you look at the recycling systems the collection systems there are so many different aspects to it and it's very yeah it's very diverse it's very different in different countries so already there we are struggling with actually uh, finding solutions that are scalable across the European Union so uh yeah advancing this towards an even broader scope is definitely a challenge but would be certainly interesting um maybe i can just touch upon the point uh, concerning the collection schemes so what we are doing is also within the project we have some we are planning some co-creation sessions with consumers so we're really trying to find uh ways uh, so that we make collection schemes uh, more attractive and uh, more yeah more successful let's say uh, by looking at consumers themselves and uh, creating solutions that they like co-creating it with them so that we actually find solutions that are also uh, taken up well let's say so i hope that we will get some fruitful insights there and that this will somehow be scalable also to other other countries and other continents uh, hopefully but uh, yeah this is something that we still are investigating and uh, please bear with us a little bit and uh, meanwhile follow us on linkedin let's say <laughs> Exactly. <clears throat> I was about to say the same thing. Uh, it was a very tricky question to ask, and I apologize, Teresa, for, to, for putting you on the spot, but you did manage it well. Um, we we do have a, a very um, centered, focus center um, area in Europe, but by all means, Mohammed, we are glad that you are following us today, and be. Um, we will be um, sharing soon also uh, for both uh, Increase and Primus their uh, links so you can follow the, the, the project's involvement. And I'm pretty sure that even if, uh, of course, we're working in a European context, we will have very good results coming for um, also to other countries outside the European context. Thank you, Teresa, again. And now the next question from the audience is from Stefania Carpio and is for Maelstrom. So, Damien, be ready because uh, she's asking a question that I was about to ask, but I'm glad that she brought it up. Is the impact, what do you think are the impacts of the technology that you are developing on marine species? And I think this is something that touches all of us and interested. In. So please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the question, Stefania. Um, that actually, um, well, you know, European projects, they reply to uh, topics from the European Union. Um, and the, uh, the target of the project was the evaluation of removal technologies on the ecosystem. So that's really a key part of the project. Uh, that we have uh, biologists uh, in, in the work package two on the assessment, and they are assessing the pre and post uh, impact in terms of uh, um, impact. And so in the um, technology that I showed on this, uh, the water robotic system, um, they are evaluating um, the, uh, the fishes, the uh, micro and nanoplastics in the sediments, or the water quality. I mean, all these aspects in terms of uh, environmental impact of the cleaning uh, thing. So we, we have a two years evaluation every six months. They, they make the evaluation of the impact of the removal of what we did. So obviously, uh, when you have a hotspot with lots of uh, my litter on the surrounding, 
the impact is difficult to quantify because as much as you remove, there are still a lot of that. So it's it's a local impact, not a big impact. So that's one of the things they are they are dealing with, and uh, and um, the uh, the outcomes will come uh, before the end of the project. <clears throat> so that's for the uh, scientific evaluation, let's say. Now, uh, the question was on the uh, MAM species. What we do is on the, on the seabed of shallow waters. Uh, so we're not talking about these floating plastics in the Pacific garbage patch where we see the whales eating the plastics that float and so on. The one that we have, they are lying on the seabed, on the sand, on the bottom of the sea. Um, so obviously there are also um, marine species there. Um, what we do is to try to uh, have a technology that has a minimum impact in the in the sense that we don't have a mobile rover with tracks like a tank that would actually uh, destroy all the landscape and all the ecosystems. We are coming from the, from the surface with this cable robot so that allows us to really pick from the surface and minimize the surface that we touch and the, the, the components that we that we uh, have an impact. It's uh, fully electric, so we have a gasoline generator on the platform, so we do generate uh, CO2 emissions. Um, we proceeded uh, with an uh, LCA evaluation of the uh, technology, uh, looking at how many kilos of uh, waste we're generating uh, or removing, what was the impact on the uh, construction and the use of the platform and so on. And the, the major impact in terms of LCA uh, is on the use of uh, the gasoline for the uh, powering of the platform and also the tugboat that moves it. And in terms of manufacturing, it's, it's more on the use of uh, steel for all, all the equipment and also the electronics that is required for the control system, the motors, the, uh, the drives and so on. So it's for us the first time we did the LCA on a robotic system. It's difficult, it's not easy, there's lots of opening questions. Really interesting, so I really engage people in technology to do that, it's really uh, eye-opening. Uh, and what we're doing now is trying to compare that, but it's a technology that's, that has not um, equivalent. So it's difficult to actually uh, uh, evaluate the impact. So we use that in if we should improve, how we should improve. And also uh, in this LCA, there is not this uh, environmental aspect uh, that we also do on the, other, uh, on the other side. So we're now looking at how we can uh, look at the negative impact generated by the use of the system versus the positive impact on the ecosystem. Um, so that's still work in progress. We have a system that do not harm the environment, do not harm the fishes because we don't collect them. Um, but it's not having an impact either on these uh, turtles that you see with the fish uh, around or with the plastics around or the waste that's heated because we deal with the uh, plastic that is on the seabed. There are other partners that work with the bubble barriers around the rivers. And in that case, um, they have also positive impact because uh, it's not blocking the surface and it's actually uh, letting the fishes go through the, uh, the rivers. And uh, it also brings uh, oxygen to the, to the rivers also. So it has uh, technology to collect the plastic, but it also has uh, derivated uh, positive impacts on the environment. So um, that's really uh, what we are focusing on on the, uh, on the project. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Also very well uh, um, explained. Um, we all know that when we, we really approach uh, innovation uh, and, and technology, we do have to consider, of course, the, 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 the whole impact. Uh, uh, but, of course, the solutions that we are trying to achieve in these research uh, projects um, should bring uh, a better impact to the whole ecosystem. And uh, so this is for sure one of the, of the main um, questions that we should uh, um, keep in mind, you know, how, how to avoid um, creating problems to, to, to the marine species, but I'm pretty sure uh, this is uh, very well uh, taken care of within Maelstrom. Uh, the next question is for Carolina. Carolina, um, I understand that you are um, leading the dissemination and the communication uh, activities. So my question is regarding uh, engagement, citizens and stakeholders engagement um, within your project and also within the other projects uh, after after your, your reply, if possible. How um, 
uh, what is the strategy? What are you actually doing in order to engage the citizens into adopting? Because uh, we know that without uh, engagement from the citizens and the stakeholders, our our solutions cannot uh, yet succeed. So, please. Thank you, Aime, for that question. Uh, this is quite important because uh, we, we need to engage people, industrial and citizens as well, to understand their needs and understand it and, and explain uh, how the world is changing. So in the Primus project, we have uh, two, two main stakeholder groups that we are approaching, the industrial and the citizens one. And we have created uh, five social media targeting uh, the, those those two groups. So we are approaching for the industrial uh, group, LinkedIn and Twitter, and for the citizens, uh, Facebook and Instagram, given different approaches and different kind of messages. A little bit more technical in uh, for LinkedIn and Twitter for the industrial stakeholders, and uh, more light and more just to global messages for for the citizens um this is one part and we are creating this these two uh, stakeholder groups that we have created online events for them uh, just to understand uh, if if they can contribute in the in the industrial side uh, how they can contribute in our claims for instance in the white papers and the different changes that that we have we want to approach in regulations and standards, as well as uh, giving them um, pills and uh, exclusive information of the project in advance. So we have an, an exclusive uh, website for them that they they can approach only if they are uh, they have the link and the password. So this is this is one part as they can uh, be part of, of the project in the industrial stakeholder group and in the citizens. We are approaching uh, two, two ways. So uh, we had the University of Tallinn that analyzed the, uh, how the consumers around Europe uh, think and consume recyclates. And uh, they, they created different personas profiles for that to understand uh, what type of, of people we have uh, and, and opinions we have in different countries and how we can approach them um, and uh, how we could uh, give them information tackling the, the ages that are interest in, uh, in this in this type of topic. So right now we are starting uh, activities with different universities around Europe just to give them some lectures and, and uh, explaining the, the project as well as engaging them in different activities just for them to, well, understand this, the, uh, the, the use of recyclates in the, in, in high added value products because they are more used to uh, consume recyclates in in bottles or in bags or in this kind of uh, uh, materials and products that they they don't have added value pro um, power process with technical and safety requirements. Hope this answers your question, Aime. Okay, I see Aime is, uh, is uh, frozen, so I avoid the void and also comment that on the, uh, on the milestone project where we have also a lot of um, stakeholders uh, engagement activities uh, through the um, the, the, the different partners. Um, so it's mainly focused on a, um, the two uh, demonstration sites in Portugal and in uh, Italy, in Venice. In Venice, it's uh, led by the uh, NGO uh, Venice Lagoon Plastic Free, and they're making lots of cleanups on the lagoons. They have lots of uh, events for citizen engagement. Um, it's really dedicated to, uh, to raise the awareness on the issue of marine litter and also its technologies. 
In Portugal, it's the same, but it's led by the uh, CIMA uh, Research Center. And they also have lots of activities. We have a nice uh, plastic whale uh, to, uh, to raise the attention. And uh, we do also many uh, workshops and webinars on the technology and the issues. And uh, obviously, we have also a um, stakeholder engagement uh, within the, uh, the project the website. We have a forum. And we are connecting with all the different uh, projects related to uh, to Marlita, uh, so that we get the community and, and uh, sharing. There's also a big thing that we do in that. Uh, it's more towards the administration, and it's uh, related to the uh, definition of guidelines for the European uh, Commission, uh, white papers, contribution to the uh, oceans uh, mission. You know, the Commission they define big uh, transversal uh, missions. One of them is the oceans, and so we contribute to these. Uh, uh, more, uh, let's say, uh, administrative and legal and, and strategic uh, paper. I see Amy is back, so giving you back the, the word, Amy. I was just uh, filling the void and, uh, and explaining how else from also had uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, stakeholder engagement. Mm. You see first again, so maybe Teresa, you can. Yes. Do the same. <laughs> I apologize. I'm still having connection issues. I know if you notice, but I'm pretty sure you notice. Uh, I had to leave you for a second. I hope you can hear me well now. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Damien, for touching on on your um, engagement policies uh, and and strategies within Maelstrom. Um, Teresa, did you have the chance to tackle uh, to, to to explain your strategies? Uh? Not yet, but I'm, I'm happy yet. to also Please. jump in unless Please. you have. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, uh, we're also doing the, let's say, classical uh, outreach like on social media and uh, we're holding workshops and uh, presentations at different conferences. So we try to be present as much as possible. But then beyond that, we're also currently developing an explainer video. So this is then also targeted to a very broad audience. So making those very complex complex aspects more graspable and trying to really explain the topic in a, in a non-technical way. Then we're also developing a knowledge hub, which will be published on our website where you can click and then see the different aspects and how they're interlinked. And uh, we're targeting policymakers and the standardization bodies. So for example, we're currently really discussing in depth on the definition of recyclet and also how the quality is perceived of recyclets uh, from different stakeholders. So there's quite a variance in terms of the different stakeholders. So some perceive quality as only purity, some perceive quality as many different aspects, such as functionality, addition of additives, and, and many different aspects. And also the calculation of recycled is currently, uh, of recycled content is currently also something that we are working on. And maybe beyond that, uh, I can mention that we are, of course, we have quite a, a, a good uh, view on the value chain already within our project, but we are also obviously uh, looking beyond and having some interviews with other stakeholders in order to really have a yeah um, have an analysis which also reflects not only the within increase vision let's say and uh, I mentioned already that we had a workshop with designers and product developers so we're also targeting specific uh, actors along the value chain within workshops and uh, we will be having some co-creation sessions with consumers in order to develop solution to develop solutions for uh, collection systems and uh, Carolina already mentioned in the beginning we are some we are actually four sister projects, so Increase, Primus, and then two more, which were funded with this, within the same period uh, for the same topic. So we are also uh, con connecting with them, and uh, we will actually be uh, together at uh, another conference in May. So that's when we will first meet each other offline and trying to, of course, then even more uh, see where we can uh, synergize and collaborate in order to have more, like, emphasis on our impact, let's say. Thank you, thank you, Teresa. Uh, well, I foresee that you you can um, you you will have already within the four uh, sisters projects uh, a hub. So I really hope that uh, the impact, of course, uh, increases and, and, uh, and the network of, of engagement increases, so that the the, the results of both uh, projects and, and the the other two um, are more tangible. Uh, towards our our society in in general. Well, we are almost wrapping up. 
um, is, has been a very, very interested and, uh, and uh, intense, I would say, uh, presentation um, day. Um, I really hope that uh, all of the of the of the attendants and uh, the audience will follow the three projects that we have the chance and the honor today of presenting. Um, I wish you all the best in the in the in the next uh, month of, of work and, and, and hope that uh, today uh, intervention and today exchange will not be limited to today. That uh, now we are creating this network of contacts so that uh, we can uh, continue exchanging the best practices for sure that each of these projects are bringing, but also uh, a sort of uh, assistant network where we can confront each other and, and, and exchange on barriers and, and, and of course on solutions for, for these barriers. This is the reason why uh, we as Belta created these uh, webinars and we hope that it will bring um, positive exchanges within, within the, the research and innovation uh, community, not only in Europe, since we know that we have audience from other parts of the world, but in general uh, for the research and innovation community worldwide. Again, thank you so much for to all the, the presenters. Uh, thank you for, for the opportunity to, to explore your projects and uh, let's keep in touch, okay? Let's keep exchanging and, and improving the circularity movement within within Europe and um, and more. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I uh, appreciated your, your assistance and I wish you a beautiful uh, rest of the day and week. Likewise, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you.